today we're going to be diving into a really cool example of what's possible with shaders. It's actually the reason I started looking into the topic in the first place. We're building something called chromatic aberration. It's a distortion effect, but practically speaking, it's taking an image and displacing its color channels to produce a really cool glitchy effect. Now before we dive into the code, let's see some examples to show you what I'm talking about. First off, shout out to Jaron Fox, who built a sample a while ago showcasing a chromatic aberration modifier. So if I play the video, you'll see that when a drag occurs, the colors start to separate a little bit. So this is the effect we're going for, and we're going to try and build it with an AGSL shader. So here's another example built as a GLSL shader and showcased in Shader Toy. So you can see here that it's much more exaggerated and quicker so that you see uh, it looks a lot more glitchy. So pretty cool. As you can see, it's a really nice effect. So I'm looking forward to exploring how we can build it with AGSL shaders and Compose UI. Let's look at some code. Let's start off by building our own simple chromatic aberration shader. Then I'll showcase a couple of cool ways that we can use it. So as we saw in the examples, we typically use this type of effect on images or videos. So let's import an image as our starting point. So here we have a picture of my dog Sora and we want to use a shader to modify the image. How are we going to do that? The answer is render effects. Now previously we were using our shader as a shader brush to paint some component, but today we are going to be using our shader as a render effect for the graphics layer. This is extremely powerful. Let's find out why. So let me write a quick shader here. We're going to have a half for main function to frag chord. I get used to writing this out. And we're going to return a half for. I'm just going to return the color red for now. Okay, make sure you have semicolons. And I'm going to create a uniform composable, or sorry, uniform type of shader, and we're going to call it composable. And we'll get to this in a minute. Now, if we go down. I'm going to tap into the graphics layer modifier of the image and I'm going to set the render effect to be a render effect dot. I'm going to create a runtime shader effect. We're going to pass it our chromatic shader and we're going to pass it this string called composable. And then the last thing we're going to do is create it as a compose render effect. Now the entire thing is red, so one thing we forgot to do is set clip to true so that it clips to the shape. All right, this is good. We see a red rectangle here, which means our shader is being applied to our image. Now to restore our original image, I'm gonna use this magic uniform here. You can see the type is shader, and that's because when we use render effect, we can actually pass our original composable that we're applying that render effect to as an input shader to this current shader. You can think of this sort of like a pipeline. The image shader by itself will just render the image and our shader acts as like a layer on top where we can do some funky stuff or nothing at all. Now let's restore the image by just calling composable eval and I'm going to give it the current pixel. And there it is. We have our original image again, but we have access to it in our shader. So in order to create this chromatic aberration effect, we're going to take this original image and we're going to displace the red and blue color channels a bit. So let's start by creating a float called displacement. And I'm just going to set that to be 30 for now. And then we're going to get the original colors of the image by doing something like this. I'm going to call it color. We're going to say composable.eval frag chord.rgb. Okay, this gives us the colors of the image. 
And so for the red channel, I'm gonna do color r equals uh, the image. We're gonna Im we are going to evaluate a displaced pixel coordinate. So float two frag core x minus displacement frag core dot y, and then we're gonna get the r channel. Now we're going to do the same thing for the blue channel. And we're just going to change this to be plus. Okay. And then we're going to just going to change this to be half four of color 1.0. And check that out. Sheesh. So we're seeing the effect. And if I modify this displacement, say something like 60, you'll see that it gets way more exaggerated. And then if I modify it to be something more like 10, you can see it's a lot more muted. Actually, I can't even tell, maybe 20. Um, you can see that it's uh, it just adds a little bit of a blur effect almost, and the color's slightly fraying on the edges. All right, we did it. We created a chromatic aberration shader using AGSL. And honestly, it was really easy. You can imagine how doing it at a higher level would be much more cumbersome. So we can just stop right there, but we're not gonna. I'm gonna show you a couple examples on how you can apply the shader to UI components. So this first example is a combination of a bunch of different techniques. But essentially, I'm just rendering this card here and I'm gonna use a touch point to help trigger the effect. Uh, it's also triggering a rotation, which I think adds a nice playfulness to it. And one thing you'll notice here, one thing you might notice here is that the effect is actually more prominent on the edges and less prominent on the center. So this is a one way you can kind of modify it so that it's a little bit less jarring. I also decided to play around with adding a noise texture to the red and blue channels. So you can see that when I do that and rerun it, and then I apply it, you get this kind of old school video effect. This to me is the fun part. We learned about noise in the last video and we're just applying it here in a creative way to create something that's accidentally awesome. Now there is one more example I wanted to show you just to come full circle and that is using this effect with a view pager transition. So let's go ahead and load up that example. Matic view pager and we'll run it. So we have a view pager here, and you can see, as I start to scroll, you get that color bleed effect, and it looks really cool. It doesn't look exactly like Jaren's, but that's okay. Now before we go, I did tell you that render effects, and using shaders with render effects is really powerful. And we kind of showed that, but I think there's one more thing I can show you that will really convince you. Let's take a look. So here we have an app I built called HydroHomie, which if you don't know, is the best personal hydration app on the Play Store. So if you wanna make sure you're drinking enough water, you should check it out. Let's go ahead and navigate to the settings page. And this looks cool, you know, but I wanna apply the chromatic aberration effect to everything here. And that's actually really easy to do. All I need to do is uh, add the render effect to the graphics layer of the root composable of this page. And let me just run this. And when I navigate to settings, you can see that this cool effect has been applied to literally everything on the screen. And we've successfully made this much harder to read. We're at the point in the series where we're just gonna be building as many shader examples as possible so that we get comfortable writing our own. This is gonna help us when we dive into more complex shaders because we'll have the practice and foundation to go off of. It'll also allow us to extend or recreate shaders that others have built in really cool ways. If you're liking my content so far, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Also, if you wanna get more frequent updates, you can follow me on Twitter where I post what I'm working on more often. The next video will be more focused on some of the new stuff that came out of Google I.O., so I'm pretty excited about that. 
but don't worry, I have a lot more shader content on the way. All right, that's it from me. Bye now. See ya. Bye-bye.